Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to create a basic spring Hello World type project. Uh, so I've got Eclipse here, and as I described in the previous tutorials, I've installed the Maven integration for Eclipse plugin and the Spring IDE plugin, and I'm going to be making use of those. So I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to go to Other here, and I'm going to create a new Maven project because I want to use uh, Maven facilities. You can create just an ordinary project and then conf and then kind of add on the Maven stuff later, change it into a Maven project, but uh, it's probably easiest if I just start with it. So um, I'll select Maven project and click Next. And here we saw in a previous tutorial that you can click Next here and select, uh, for example, the Quick Start archetype. But just, just for variety really, here I'm going to tick to create a simple project. Click Next and let's give it a group ID and, and as we've seen previously this is just kind of like a package name so I'll make one up. I'll say com.caveofprogramming.spring.test and an artifact ID is like the program name and I'll make one up for this and I'm going to call this spring-tutorial Hyphen five, just because um, this is the fifth uh, video in this series of tutorials, unless I've gone back and added more. Um, and I'll click finish, and it, it's generated this project with the artifact ID name, as you can see. And because I, I didn't select an archetype, I have no Java code at all in here. Uh, so I've just got like a directory structure, and I've got the pom.xml, the Maven project object model, I think it is, where I can add in my dependencies, which will fetch jars for me. So let's first of all create a basic Java program. I'm going to right click here and if you know Java, which hopefully you do, if you're following these tutorials, then this will be familiar territory. I'm just going to create a new class. Let's call it app, give it a main method and I'll put it in a package, let's say com.caveofprogramming.spring.test and you can just make one up for yourself, um, it doesn't matter. Click finish. And uh, what I'm also going to do is Spring lets you bolt together um, kind of plain ordinary Java objects, POJOs. Um, so um, we're going to create just an ordinary Java class, and I'm gonna I'm gonna instantiate that using the Spring framework. You'll see how that works. So I'll be I'll be creating a Spring Bean, but a Spring Bean is just an ordinary Java object configured by Spring, basically. So in this package, I'm gonna create a new class, and just completely arbitrarily, I'll call this person. So we'll, we'll imagine that this represents a person and I'll click finish and let's just give it one method so we have something to work with. I'll give it a method called public void speak and in there I'll just do a sysout and say hello I'm a person. That, sh that should do the trick and uh, in my app.java now of course we could do person person equals new person and person.speak so this is a normal Java program without using Spring or indeed Maven really for that matter. So let's just run that and it says hello I'm a person. Now let's bring in Spring and uh, before we can start using Spring we need to have the right jars. So I'm going to use Maven to get those jars. I'm going to double click pom.xml here and uh, because we've got the Maven integration for Eclipse plugin installed uh, we've got this nice view of the pom.xml and you can see the raw view if you click on this tab here and that's what it looks like. At the moment there are no dependencies in there, just some information about my project. So I'll go to the dependencies tab because using this tab is easier than adding these manually in the XML. And I'm going to click add here to add a dependency and I'm going to search for Spring Framework. Now, if for some reason, uh, may, I, I don't know, I, I guess it would be Spring, if Spring uh, Source.org change the name of this, then try searching for Spring. But I, I'd imagine this, these uh, dependency names are going to stay the same. 
So at the moment, at least, what I need is uh, I need to type in Spring Framework, and it'll find me all the um, the all the dependencies that have Spring Framework as the group ID. And I'm going to scroll down this list till I see these all dot Spring Framework dependencies. And now here, uh, it's really it's really annoying, but you kind of have to just know what to do here. I I prefer in a tutorial to say look to find the latest inf version of this information search for such and such a website and look at this or look at that but it, spring seems to be so confusing that uh, people who make tutorials or, or who write books about spring always seem to just accept that you kind of need to know which jars to use which is fair enough I suppose um, there is at the top here you see this all.spring framework dependency with just the name spring if I expand that we've got what seems to be kind of an all-in-one jar for Spring. I don't know what this SEC is, and maybe this will have disappeared by the time you look at this. Uh, I think this is maybe some security fix release or something. But in any case, the problem is it's version 256, and uh, we've got more recent versions of Spring jars now. So unless I'm misunderstanding something here, I, I don't feel that this is much use. And um, indeed, I know that Spring used to distribute all-in-one jars, but they stopped doing that for uh, rights reasons because they apparently weren't allowed to include other open-source jars within the Spring framework, Spring framework jar. So uh, basically, I'm going to pick and choose the dependencies I want from this list here, from the org.spring framework list. And what I want is Spring spring hyphen core one which is you know this this is stuff that you can work out and indeed i did work it out just by looking at the list uh, so let's get version 3.23 or whatever the latest version is for you at the moment choose the latest version click ok and i'll click add again and again i'll type spring framework and scroll down and I also want this spring beans one here so I'll expand that and add 3.23 uh, version of that and finally I think we just need one more so I'll click add spring framework I don't know if you can add multiple ones at the same time I haven't actually tried but scroll down and I want this spring hyphen context one and uh, you'll see as we go along that I'm, I'm using uh, spring context and beans and of course the core so you'll, you'll see um, why I was drawn to selecting these dependencies later on. And, and indeed, these seem to be the ones that we need. Uh, later on, if you want to do more stuff with Spring, uh, which we will do in this course, you'll need other dependencies, probably like Spring AOP, if you want to do aspect-oriented programming. But we'll get into that in future. So I'll click OK. We've got those three dependencies now, Core, Beans, and Context. And I'm going to save this. And... Uh, Let's look at this Maven dependencies thing. So because I've already created Spring projects on this machine, there's already stuff in my Maven repository. In fact, if I drag this over a bit, you can see that these jars are in my Maven repository, which, because this is a Mac, it's like a Unix type system. And uh, that's in my slash users slash username .m2 folder. And that will be different on, for example, Windows, of course. If um, you haven't created a Spring project before, uh, it, it might, these might take a while to download. And if they really don't seem to be downloading, then try right-clicking the project and going to Maven and Update Project and try updating the project. You could tick this box here. I, I don't think it will make any difference, but uh, in any case, that should hopefully um, make Maven download the appropriate jars and you can see that we've got jars that are quite intuitively named like spring uh, hyphen beans and spring hyphen core but we've also got for example commons hyphen logging that's been brought in and uh, using Maven has saved us from having to go and find the right version of this jar on um, the Apache website and also this AOP Alliance jar uh, so this is why I wanted to use Maven because um, hunting around for the right jars is just a nightmare and uh, what we just did with Maven was pretty painless really. Okay so now we've got the, the right jars 
uh, now we can go ahead and write some spring stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an XML file that will um, instantiate this person object here. And then in my app.java, I'm going to get a person object, or in other words, a person bean, we call it in the spring lingo, from the spring container and then call the speak method on it. And although that's pretty useless, uh, of course, the power of spring comes in when we start wiring lots of beans together and then uh, maybe using the web framework or the database um, side of Spring. So this is just a little demo. Let's, um, for a start, let's, let's create the XML file. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my project folder here. Um, I'm, I'm going to select the project folder. This, this is important for what we're about to do. And I'm going to right click it and go to new. Let's go to new other. And because I have the Spring IDE plugin installed in Eclipse, I can scroll down here and I've got this Spring section. I'm going to select New Spring Bean Configuration File. Click Next and uh, let's call it beans.xml. I could type the XML, it's, it doesn't matter, it will add that anyway. And uh, click Next and um, I'm going to click Finish for the moment and see what it does. There we go. So we've got a beans.xml and it's in the root of the project folder because I started by right clicking the project and that's important for our purposes here. We want it to be there because we're going to load it from the working directory of the Java project and that's the root project folder when you run your project in Eclipse. Now um, I'm going to add a bean to this um, XML. You'll notice that um, if you're familiar with XML, then obviously this will look quite familiar. If you're not, then uh, it's not too complicated and you can easily pick it up. And XML, of course, just consists of opening tags like this beans tag here and uh, closing tags like this close beans tag. And um, the opening tags can have attributes like these. And we've got these namespaces um, in which um, uh, allow us to do very stuff within the XML, but I won't dwell on that here. Let's just go ahead and add a bean. So we, we could do stuff by hand, but it's easier to use this interface. So I'm going to go to this beans tab here and I'm going to click new bean. And for ID, I'll give it the ID of person in lowercase. I could, you can just make up an ID. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to give this an ID of person arbitrarily. And for class, I'm going to type person here and uppercase P because this is the class name. It's the name of this class here. And I'm going to just click browse then and get the correct class with the um, fully qualified package. So I'll double click person. And um, here we've got com.caverprogramming.spring.test.person, which is this class here. And I click finish and let's just save that as well. And if I go now to source, the source view, you can see it's added this. It's added an opening and closing bean tag. And the opening bean tag here has an ID attribute with the value that I specified, person, and a class attribute with the fully qualified class name of that person object that I created here. Now what we need to do is we need some Java code, um, which will, uh, create a, a spring bean container which will then um, read this XML and instantiate this person object. So let's go to app.java and I'm going to declare a variable here called application, well of type application context and I'll call that context. Uh, let's just put a semicolon there for a the moment because I just want to check if I double, if I single click the error, I should be able to import application context. If you don't have that, then it means you've missed off a dependency. Let's just do that now. So you should be able to import the right, um, the right class from the right Java, uh, the right jar file here. Just this is just completely normal Java, of course, which hopefully you're familiar with. And if if you can't do that, check in this Maven dependencies, check that you've got this stuff here because you should do. Um, it should have been brought in by Maven. 
and uh, you, you can try updating uh, as you as I showed you earlier doing a maven update and that sort of thing if you haven't got it and you need to be connected to the internet of course to download these jars when you do it the first time now I'm going to set that equal to um, well you see this is it's a bean container it's a, it's a class that can instantiate beans and we can then fetch those beans from this container beans just being normal Java objects and we can choose various varieties of this container one variety um, that we could have used actually um, in, instead of the application context um, interface is called bean factory I think bean factory is actually a super interface of this but um, we won't be using bean factory uh, probably at all in these tutorials because that's kind of a lower level class and I'm going to be working with various kinds of application contexts here which do a bit more than the bean factory um, classes and I just wanted to mention bean factory in case you see it somewhere it's it's kind of the same thing as application context but sort of lower level so we'll, we'll kind of skip over that and I'm going to set this equal to a new file file path XML let's see if autocomplete will work now with control space uh, in fact it doesn't let's go back a bit uh, file yeah file system XML application context uh, I can never remember the name of this but this is the one that I want file system XML application context so um, so I'm gonna set this variable of this interface type equal to this class let's put new in of course and um, I need to supply an argument to the constructor here which is the name of the XML file to read and, and that's going to be beans.xml because that's what I called it and uh, I'm not giving it any kind of path here I could give it some sort of file path name but because I took care to put it in the working directory of the project in, in the root project folder I can just say beans.xml and um, we should be fine so that creates my um, my spring bean container my application context and I can now use that container to get beans from it and there's only one bean in it which is this person bean so let's let's try to do that instead of doing new person I'm going to do context.get bean get bean and I pass the ID of that bean and I gave it an ID in the XML of person and I need to cast the return type of this to the right object which is the right class which is person and now hopefully if I run that it'll work we're getting a little warning here saying that context is never closed but um, as far as I know there is no closed method on context so um, I don't think that's a problem let's run this and now uh, you can see that we get a load of debug information here and what happens is this object here reads this file and then it goes and finds the person class and that was mentioned in this XML file and instantiates instantiates it and we can then fetch that object from this context and then we can call methods on the object as usual and it says down here hello I'm a person so um, yeah j just to just to repeat if if you like just like if you enjoy watching videos and you don't find it stressful then certainly there's no harm in watching these videos but if now you have this feeling like you you don't quite understand it and you're, you're struggling to get your head around it or you feel it's really boring or whatever <laughs> then I'd strongly recommend going away and trying to do this and you might encounter some problems like Maven not downloading stuff or um, I don't know I don't know there are lots of problems that you could encounter but working through those problems will really uh, get you a um, good understanding of of what we're doing here hopefully and uh, if you're lucky it'll all go smoothly the first time because as you can see spring programs are not that complex even though we use maven and we, we use like the spring IDE plugin to create the XML nothing funny is really going on we're just creating a Java class um, that's specified in a jar file, an ordinary jar file and uh, we're telling that to read some XML that we write ourselves and we're doing some stuff um, with it using this API 
So there's nothing magic going on. Spring is just uh, a bunch of jars and some XML that you create. That's all it is. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And uh, in the next tutorial, we'll, we'll look at some other stuff that you can do. Um, among other things, you can configure your beans. And uh, of course, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we probably look at that next time. And we're going to get on to wiring them together, which is what uh, Spring is really for. And we'll look at stuff like aspect-oriented programming and, of course, web applications, which are very important. But we need to walk before we can run. And so to start with, we are going to just look at configuring beans um, a bit a bit further in this series of, series of tutorials. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find a link to the complete course in the description underneath the video. And um, I'll be releasing a bunch of free videos in this series, although the, the whole tutorial series is not free. But I'll release enough videos to get you started with Spring. And uh, you can find all my latest stuff on www caveofprogramming.com So that's it for this this time and uh, until next time happy coding <laughs>